Lawrence was the second Archbishop of Canterbury from about 604 to 619. He was a member of the Gregorian mission sent from Italy to England to Christianize the Anglo-Saxons from their native Anglo-Saxon paganism, although the date of his arrival is disputed. He was consecrated Archbishop by his predecessor, Augustine of Canterbury, during Augustine's lifetime, to ensure continuity in the office. While Archbishop, he attempted unsuccessfully to resolve differences with the native British bishops by corresponding with them about points of dispute. Lawrence faced a crisis following the death of King Ethelbert of Kent when the king's successor abandoned Christianity. He eventually reconverted. Lawrence was revered as a saint after his death in 619. Early life Lawrence was part of the Gregorian mission originally dispatched from Rome in 595 to convert the Anglo-Saxons from their native paganism to Christianity. He landed at Thanet. Kent with Augustine in 597, or, as some sources state, first arrived in 601 and was not a part of the first group of missionaries. He had been a monk in Rome before his travels to England, but nothing else is known of his history or background. The medieval chronic Labide says that Augustine sent Lawrence back to Pope Gregory I to report on the success of converting King Ethelbert of Kent and to carry a letter with questions for the Pope, accompanied by Peter of Canterbury, another missionary, he set off some time after July 598, and had returned by June 601. He brought back with him Gregory's replies to Augustine's questions, a document commonly known as the Libellus Responsonum, that Bede incorporated in his Historia Ecclesiastica Gentis Anglorum. Lawrence is probably the Lawrence referred to in the letter from Gregory to Bertha, Queen of Kent. In that letter, Gregory praises Bertha for her part in the conversion of her husband, details of which Gregory says he received from Lawrence the priest. It is known that Lawrence returned to England with Miletus and others of the second group of missionaries in the summer of 601, but there is no record of Peter being with them. Archbishop Lawrence succeeded Augustine to the See of Canterbury in about 604, and ruled until his death on 2 February 619. To secure the succession, Augustine had consecrated Lawrence before he died, even though that was prohibited by canon law. Augustine was afraid though that if someone did not step into the office immediately, it would damage the missionary efforts in Britain. However, Lawrence never received a pallium from Rome, so he may have been considered uncanonical by the papacy. Bede makes a point of comparing Augustine's action in consecrating Lawrence to St. Peter's action of consecrating Clement as Bishop of Rome during Peter's lifetime, which the theologian J. Robert Wright believes may be Bede's way of criticizing the practices of the Church in his day. In 610 Lawrence received letters from Pope Boniface IV addressed to him as Archbishop and Augustine's successor. The correspondence was in response to Lawrence having sent Miletus to Rome earlier in 610 to solicit advice from the papacy on matters concerning the English Church. While in Rome Miletus attended a synod and brought the synodical decrees back with him to Lawrence. In 613 Lawrence consecrated the monastery church built by Augustine in Canterbury and dedicated it to Saints Peter and Paul. It was later re-consecrated as St. Augustine's Abbey, Canterbury. Lawrence also wrote to the bishops in the lands held by the Scots and by the Britons, urging them to hold Easter on the day that the Roman Church celebrated it, instead of their traditional date, part of the Easter controversy. The letter is also preserved in Bede's history. Lawrence in 609 stated that Dagon, a native bishop, would not eat with Lawrence or share a roof with the archbishop, due to the differences between the two churches. Pagan reaction. Ethelbert died in 616. During Lawrence's tenure, his son Eadbald abandoned Christianity in favor of Anglo-Saxon paganism forcing many of the Gregorian missionaries to flee the pagan backlash that followed Ethelbert's death.
Among them in Gaul were Miletus, who was Bishop of London, and Justice, who was Bishop of Rochester. Remaining in Britain, Lawrence succeeded in reconverting Eadbald to Christianity. Bede relates the story that Lawrence had been prepared to give up when he was visited by St. Peter in a dream or vision. St. Peter chastised Lawrence and whipped him, and the marks of the whipping remained after the vision or dream ended. Lawrence then displayed them to Eadbald, and the king was converted on the spot. Bede, however, hints that it was the death of some of the leaders of the pagan party in battle that really persuaded Lawrence to stay. According to Benedict Award, a historian of Christianity, Bede uses the story of the whipping as an example of how suffering was a reminder of Christ's suffering for humans and how that example could lead to conversion. Wright argues that another point Bede is making is that it is because of the intercession of St. Peter himself that the mission continued. David Farmer, in the Oxford Dictionary of Saints, suggests that the whipping story may have been a blending of the Quo Vardis story with some information given by Jerome in a letter. Modern historians have seen political overtones in the pagan reaction. The historian D. P. Kirkby sees Eadbald's actions as a repudiation of his father's pro-Frankish policies. Alcuin, a later medieval writer, wrote that Lawrence was censured by apostolic authority. This may have been a letter from Pope Adiodatus I, commanding Lawrence to stay in Kent. Kirby goes on to argue that it was Justice, not Lawrence, who converted Eadbald, and this while Justice was Archbishop, sometime around 624. Not all historians agree with this argument, however, Nicholas Brooks states that the king was converted during Lawrence's archiepiscopate within a year of him succeeding his father. The historian Barbara York argues that there were two co-rulers of Kent after Ethelbert's death, Eadbald and Ethelwald, and that Eadbald was converted by Lawrence while Ethelwald was converted by Justice after his return to Rochester. Another factor in the pagan reaction was Lawrence's objection to Eadbald's marriage to his father's widow something that Christians considered to be unlawful. All efforts to extend the church beyond Kent encountered difficulties due to the attitude of King Redwald of East Anglia, who had become the leading king in the south after Ethelbert's death. Radwald was converted before the death of Ethelbet, perhaps at the urging of Ethelbet, but his kingdom was not, and Radwald seems to have converted only to the extent of placing a Christian altar in his pagan temple. It proved impossible for Miletus to return to London as bishop, although Justice did resume his duties at Rochester. Death and Legacy Lawrence died on 2 February 619, and was buried in the Abbey of St. Peter and Paul in Canterbury, later renamed St. Augustine's. His relics, or remains, were moved, or translated, to the new Church of St. Augustine's in 1091. His shrine was in the axial chapel of the Abbey Church flanking the shrine of Augustine, his predecessor. Lawrence came to be regarded as a saint, and was given the feast day of 3 February. The 9th century stone missal commemorates his feast day, along with Miletus and Justice. Evita was written about the time of his translation, by Gesellen, but it is mainly based on information in Bede. His tomb was opened in 1915. Besides his feast day, the date of his translation, the 13th of September, was also celebrated after his death. Lawrence's tenure as archbishop is mainly remembered for his failure to secure a settlement with the Celtic Church, and for his reconversion of Eadbald following Ethelbert's death. He was succeeded as archbishop by Miletus, the Bishop of London. Citations Carrot Blair World of Bede p. 85 Carrot ABC Lapage, Laurentius, Blackwell Encyclopedia of Anglo-Saxon England. Carrot ABC DEFGH Brooks, Lawrence, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. Carrot Stenton Anglo-Saxon England p. 106. Carrot Hindley Brief History of the Anglo-Saxons p. 36. Carrot A.B. Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury pp. 9-13.
Carrot Blair World of Bead P. 59. Carrot Blair World of Bead P. 63. Carrot Blair World of Bead P. 60. Carrot Blair World of Bead P. 66. Carrot A.B. Fried A.L. Handbook of British Chronology P. 213. Carrot A.B.C. Hindley Brief History of the Anglo-Saxons P. 43. Carrot A.B. Stenton Anglo-Saxon England P.P. 112-113. Carrot Wright Companion to Bede P. 47. Carrot Blair World of Bede P. 80. Carrot A.B. Blair World of Bede P.P. 86-87. Carrot Bede History of the English Church and People P.P. 105-107. Carrot Decaro Monks and Civilization P. 261. Carrot ABCD Kirkby Earliest English Kings P.P. 30-33. Carrot Brooks Early History of the Church of Canterbury P.P. 64-66. Carrot Ward Venerable Bede P.P. 120-121. Carrot Wright Companion to Bede P.P. 48-50. Carrot A. B. Farmer Oxford Dictionary of Saints pp. 313-314. Carrot Quoted in Kirkby Earliest English Kings p. 31. Carrot York Kings and Kingdoms p. 32. Carrot York Conversion p. 123. Carrot Stenton Anglo-Saxon England p. 127. Carrot Stenton Anglo-Saxon England P. 112. Carrot Nilsson Cathedral Shrines P. 67. Carrot Walsh A New Dictionary of Saints P. 357. Carrot Farmer Oxford Dictionary of Saints P. 366.